I love doing one that Rod wrote, which was really quite bizarre. It was called Five Characters in Search of an Exit. And where the hell are these people? You, you're meeting a ballet dancer, a army major, a clown, a Scottish bagpiper, a tramp, these ill-assorted people all together, and they don't know why they're there. And it uh, comes out that they're, uh, anyway, they, they finally try to find a way to get out. They see a, a rim and some sky above them, and they work out a way to stand on each other's shoulders and get up there. And the army guy throws his sword on a rope over the edge of the thing and pulls himself up and gets to the edge and looks over and screams with horror and falls off. And you cut outside to a snowy uh, street and you're hearing bells and this little girl's hand picks up a little toy soldier. And she says, you, I think you dropped this. And she puts it back in the Salvation Army toy barrel. And that's what this is. This was a, that wonderful, insane, that doesn't show its hand until the very last minute that Rod was famous for. I love doing that. And that was one that I was asked to do a whole updating of by a Twilight Zone fan that I thoroughly uh, liked. J.J. Uh, Abrams, Abrams, who was doing Felicity, it was a you know pretty popular series about sort of college soap opera, very well written and beautifully acted and directed. And he, he had seen the 40th anniversary of the Twilight Zone, where I was talking at the uh, Museum of Radio and Television in Southern California. And my agent said, "You left so fast, you didn't get to meet Ab Abrams, who wanted to meet you. He wants you to do a Felicity." I said, "I don't know what Felicity is." He said, well, I'll send you some tapes. So he sent me a couple of tapes. I thought that was pretty well done. So uh, my agent gave J.J. my number and called me here in Monterey. And uh, he said, I want to get you down here and talk you into doing a Twilight Zone. I want to do my show in the style that you guys did with Twilight Zone, the black and white and the whole sense of heightened reality, uh, almost melodrama, but real life melodrama. And uh, so I... He said, oh, you're going to come down, I'll talk you into it. So I went down and I walked into the office expecting to see this seasoned, middle-aged fan of Twilight Zone, younger than my grandson, quite literally, this youngster, J.J. Abrams, very talented guy. So we worked out a way to use the, uh, the finale of the Felicity was the last act, was, was the whole of the Twilight Zone. But it was the Felicity characters in a, a big, weird box. And it was a perfect transposition. But we did the whole thing in black and white. And I worked with the actors to bring a sort of sense of the style of the Twilight Zones. They kept saying, well, what is the difference between um, the way we act? And, and then it's definitely there when you see it on the screen. They'd love the show. They'd seen the, the show. And I said, well, I think it's heightened, a kind of heightened reality. It's a, it's a more theatrical presence on camera than is frequently possible now. But, the young actors and today's producers aim for a kind of ironic or shrug of the shoulders, um, once removed thing. Whereas the Twilight Zone times were very earnest actors. I mean, um, showing kind of heights of problems and crunches and uh, performing in somewhat a more theatrical way. And so they picked this up and they. They loved doing it. They thought it was quite a gag. They thought they were overacting all the time. And when we all saw the film together at UCLA, they invited us to the film school at UCLA and showed the film. And they saw it for the first time there. And they said, we weren't overacting. That's right. That belongs. And they, they were so pleased with themselves because they, as young today, actors thought that was hammy, that they were being very overacted. And it was great fun. And it was it, it created a tremendous... Oh, it's, it's fun to see how... Well, the crew adapted to it. The excellent cameraman was so intrigued with the idea that he kept asking me about lenses that we used. He made the crew come dressed in suits, thinking that's the way they did it 40 years ago. And I said, I bet you therefore we were just as sloppy then as you are now. But he made them, it, had, it was a psychological effect. It was, he, he rented a huge old fashioned Mitchell camera. It was very cumbersome. And he made the operators and the camera guys learn to use this big heavy thing on a dolly track. It was like 10 times heavier and more cumbersome than the very excellent streamlined equipment of today. 
Well, it all aided and abetted the sense of what we got. But this is because um, Michel Monvillain, the, the, the cinematographer, and everybody got into the act, got into the spirit of the Twilight Zone. And it, it was fun. We got, had a great time doing it.